Hi everybody, it's Han Jinder. You might know me as Queen Elliar of Wayrest from the Elder Scrolls. Um, we were going through time management games. Um, if this is not the first video that you've seen, we'll keep it short. Basically, they're there to help you manage your hobbies or your personal projects if you are a sort of venture capitalist and also to teach you how to interact with the office emotionally. Um, that's what it helps you manage. So it's always a good idea to stick with them, stay on quest, stay on project, and get these really random rewards that kind of don't seem to make sense, but um, it's better overall in the um, time management zone, so it's going to be better for you at work. <clears throat> now we did find one more that we wanted to highlight, and that's Secret Garden. This one is vi um, very, very oriental, so, oh, they did an update, that's awesome. It's got a slightly different interface. I don't know if it's from Six Ways. I did nothing to check. I apologize. But the thing that we love about it is the same as we did with Golden Frontier and with um, Fantasy Garden, which is that it's art-based. It looks like someone actually did um, the renderings by hand and that they were then put on to a 3D object as skin or a background as a cell. So. Obviously, the most important thing that you have in the village is the well. So we're going through and doing that. You can fish in the pond. You appear out of a cloud into this little village, um, and you meet this gentleman here. He's just a rando farmer. Decide to help him out. And they hook you up with a broken down house that I am calling the Firefly for the Gilmore Girls. It's house in Cedarwood. So it's, um, it's got, it's what brings a different aspect to Secret Garden that I thought that some people might actually enjoy it more than Fantasy Garden or Golden Frontier. Golden Frontier is great about giving you, um, a prospecting feel. Fantasy Garden is awesome in that it feels like you're in a storybook. This one does this, which is very similar to The Sims, and I have any number of people who like absolutely endured the interior decorating aspect, so you have your own house! You can do different things. Um, so you can go ahead and order um, different foods and whatnot. Uh, we can do green tea, find out how to make that, available at Cedarwood. So. We have to leave our house and go and find out how to make green tea, um, and that's kind of how you build your life in this village that you just fell into. The nice thing about these games is they will always point you in the right direction. So I'm a dude in this one. Is there a way to change that? <clears throat> Travels, collections, rewards. I got a present. I want to know what that is. Cool! I got sturdy tongs. Am I the only one? Out of, like all my whole friends list I was playing this, that would be different. Oh, and the other thing is you get to have a pet. I have a cat. So you get a pet, you get the inside of a house. So instead of um, doing a storybook where you adventure quite as much, or doing the prospecting aspect with Americana, the difference that Secret Garden, the different tack that it took was to go the Sims way and let you decorate, let you um, build a life kind of, and have things like pets and that. So tea leaves. We actually apparently have to make those. So let's put a tea bush in. Where would this look good? I can apparently just decorate wherever the heck I want all over this village, which is fine. So we'll water it and we'll grab one of those. So 10 minutes. Now for a video very often we do speed things up and give you a pause or etc etc or use one of our bonuses. But I am trying to emphasize the fact that this sort of game um, is very time management centric. Oh, see my kitty is the only one who can get me the fruit from these. It's very time management centric and so you really want to have that focus when you go about it. I actually use it to organize my personal business. Where when I do a certain amount of things or certain things in the game, I kind of remind myself to do the same things in my business. And I actually experience a great return on that. So um, I find it incredibly comforting and rewarding to actually see that come to fruition. Um, rather than, you know, like to see it in gaming and in a game rather than in, um, I bet you I'm going to need soy. 
Rather than just in the nowhere land that is, you know, most venture capitalism, most personal businesses, um, where you might get a number or something, but I always tease my friends who liked baseball, like, oh, okay, so they hit the ball and they're on first base now. What does that mean? They haven't gotten a point yet. This actually awards me a faux system of points, and it lets me go through and experience different emotions, and I just line those up with my personal business and actually use the time management, which I think is very fun. So, um, everything is recipe based, which cracks me up. Um, I personally think that someone's going to go through and create this lexicon of, um, oh, you can't do two things at once. Oh, you can. Wait, can I? What was the recipe on that? That's instantly. Okay, so I can turn around and do something else, but I might not want to. Some of these you do have to scroll up and down on. Um, I made the last one full screen and it was a little bit clippy as far as like pop-ups, so I'm just running this one out of Facebook Game Room. Um, if I jam up my smithy, I don't know if I'll be able to get hot coals again and I think I might need those, so. Like I said, management, ooh, saw. I need a saw, or it could have been another tool that I needed since I wasn't sure I didn't want to commit to it. And it turns out I do need those, so. Oh no, actually I need a fire, okay. And I get fire. Um, since they have to put things in your inventory, it's kind of the only way that they cut corners where they will say, since you did this, we will mark it down as having made fire. Um, it's something that's not native to American culture. In fact, it's incredibly foreign where people share resources like that. If you do something for them, they will turn around and do something for you if you happen to be busy. Um, we just do not have that sort of a global village. We're slightly different. So... Um, because everyone lives in different neighborhoods and whatnot, we just don't cross over like that. So to us, it's very silly to put fire in your pouch, but um, in a lot of other cultures, and I don't know if the Orient has them or not, but in a lot of other cultures, um, you'll see where people will just step in and will just do that for you. My cat's following you around, it's adorable. Oh, I can apparently plant farmland. Okay, well, we have an extra bamboo patch there. Kind of like it. It's a little asymmetric, but I think that's the theme. So you can see um, how the fact that they use art really adds to this. It's actually, to me, an incredible bonus because it really lets the differences in the cultures that you're interacting with. Um, like I said, I think the other one is Chinese with an English bent, which is not shocking. They had the largest interactions through the 1800s. And I think this one is Japanese, just judging by the architecture. Um, it lets them interact with you through architecture, which is huge and awesome. I live right by a bunch of Frank Lloyd Wright but, um, buildings, so I'm used to this. And then, of course, there's the columns that are in the downtown because they have older buildings and so on. And it lets you experience, like, sort of Im cultural immersion, which gives you that virtual reality feel. And it comes through in the fact that they used art to do it. I don't believe if they just used a regular graphic design um, that, we, that you would be experiencing quite the same thing as you look around this village and you see, you know, the rice paper windows and the sliding doors and so on. I think that that would kind of fall by the wayside and not get noticed as much, whereas now it's very much a cultural immersion. You're like, oh, that is different and it's cool, so. All right, so we have a minute or so on our, do I have to click that together? Oh, I do because my cat brought it to me minute or so on that. We have 47 seconds left on our saw. Um, so we need a saw. We need bamboo. How was our green tea? What were we doing with that? Tea leaves we're holding on. So you can just go down the checklist. That's five minutes out. So, And you can see that since I went through and I didn't um, limit myself to doing things as quickly as possible that I now have everything organized where I'm doing multiple tasks so it's more of an assembly line and less interchangeable parts and that's what this sort of game teaches you which is awesome because we work with non-tangibles a lot in the US we work in customer service a whole lot so you have a whole lot of non-tangible um, transactions changing hands and this actually shows you how to process that emotionally in a proper and efficient and positive way that your whole quality of life goes up so I'm Ann Jindra. This is what to play next. We will be here getting tea for our table, maybe buying some more furniture, checking out different adventures, running around with our pets. So if you wanted a more Sims-based experience for your time management, this is awesome. I definitely recommend Secret Garden. It's It's got just a great feel to it. So check around the channel. I'm sure that you'll find something that you love. We do everything. Thank you for watching and as always.